Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compound part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 5. Now we'll take allotropes of carbon. There are three allotropes of carbon which we'll learn and they are for the crystalline carbon and then we have called amorphous carbon. And amorphous carbon nothing but you take small small crystalline carbon and you gel it you get amorphous carbon and in that case we have coal, charcoal and lamp black. But we will be more focused on this guy. The crystalline carbon. Because amorphous form I feel is nothing but a form of crystalline only where you have small small crystals and it is joined in the amorphous way, right? And coal and charcoal is my example. But if you go by the properties and the way it is structured, we have crystalline carbon that dominates the uh, inorganic chemistry and we have carbon di di carbon graphite and buckminster fullerene. Three different crystalline forms of carbon which will study. And they are all allotropes of carbon. And what are allotropes? We'll discuss that. So allotropes are nothing but they have same element in this. Element is same, everything is carbon, but the structure is different. Structure is different. The way it is organized, the way carbon bonds are happening, right? That is different. And with this, it gives different property. Because the property is not different, we are not bothered, we don't care. But when you see that my diamond and graphite both are same, both are carbon, but the property is different. Diamond, diamond, diamond is shiny, right? It is very hard. Graphite is good conductor of electricity, it's soft. Then only we have this curiosity to understand what is happening. Why that both has carbon but both looks different? And then we give this term called allotropes where we say that they have same element inside this. The, the, the building block is same, right? Both are made from carbon. That is a building block. But the way it is made is different. The structure is different, right? And that's why they have different properties. And carbon is the only one which has so many allotropes. So the first allotropes of carbon is diamond. So diamond, if you see in diamond, each carbon atom is bonded by four other carbon atoms. And I got this picture from Wikipedia, right? So if you see one particular carbon atom, if you take this one, if you see this one, let's take this guy. Right? Let's take this guy. So this guy, if you see, has one, two, three, and four carbon atoms. Each carbon atom, if you see, and you may say that this guy is linked only to uh, one, two, and three, but actually it is more because it has to add, it has to add, right? I mean, this is just a small part of this uh, molecule, but actually if you keep growing this, the same structure will grow. So the best thing is you can get into the, you can get into the center one, or the one which has four. For example, this guy also, right? If you see, it has four carbon atoms. You see this guy, one, two, three, four. It's not attached, but eventually if you see, all these carbon atoms are linked to four other carbon atoms. Correct? And that's how the diamond is formed, where each carbon atom is linked to four other carbon atoms. You see this guy? This guy has, see this guy, this particular guy, it has one hair, one hair, two, three, and four, right? So this guy has four carbon. Atoms. And that is how it, it looks if you increase this, you know, if you make it bigger, then you'll see that each carbon atom, the black one is a carbon atom, is linked to four other carbon atoms. Please note, four other carbon atoms. So one guy, one carbon atom. So this guy is linked to one, two, three, and four other carbon atoms. Okay? So this guy is linked to four other carbon atoms. And this is the hardest substance known. And also note that we can create a artificial uh, diamond by putting carbon to a very high pressure and very high temperature. And these diamonds look exactly like the national diamonds, but they are small. We can't keep, we can't make big diamonds. We, we can make only small diamonds because maybe because of the pressure and temperature we can give. Maybe in future, if we have a better technology, we can create bigger diamonds also. But currently, we can make only small diamonds, and these small diamonds look exactly like the national diamonds. And the point here to note was that 
each carbon atom is bonded to other four carbon atoms in the case of dimer. And if you see, there is no free electrons here, right? There is no free atom, there is no free electrons, right? So in that case, they are non-conductor. Because everything is bonded, right? Because one carbon atom has four electrons, if you see, four free electrons, correct? And all these electrons are used to form a bond. That means there is no free electrons. Because if you talk about conductivity, a particular matter, a particular object will conduct electricity only if it has free electrons to conduct electricity. In this case, one carbon atom is linked to other four carbon atoms, right? So there is no free electrons. The, the covalent bond is formed. There is no free electrons for it to transmit electricity. And that's the reason why it is bad conductivity. The second guy you will take is a graphite. You must have seen the graphite in the pencil or in the batteries. Here, each carbon atom is bonded to three carbon atoms. Please note, in case of diamond, each carbon atom is bonded to four carbon atoms. In this case, there is one carbon atom. It has four electrons. Right? I will make electrons like this. And this guy is bonded to three carbon atoms. One guy is free. So, if you see one guy is free, there are four electrons. Right? It is bonded to three atoms, one guy is free. And that's why it conducts electricity. We'll explain that also. And it forms a hexagonal array. This is where it is formed. So you see, to take any carbon atom, right? This guy is bonded to one, two, three, four. And it forms a hexagonal array. And there's a layer, this is one layer. This is another layer. And both these layers, right, they, they slide. And this image also I got from Wikipedia. And you can explore more from Wikipedia. It's a good source actually to learn more stuff. So this is the thing we have, this the structure. And you see this hexagonal array, they are placed in one layer. Uh, for example, this is layer one, this guy will be layer two. And then we will have layer three also above it. So there's a layer and that's why it's soft because it kind of slides, right? There's a very weak force of attraction between them and this force called Van der Waals force of attraction, right? And if you see, that's why the graphite is smooth and slick. And it is also a good conductor of electricity. Why? Because if you see only three is attached, one guy is free, right? One electron is free and that electron helps in conducting electricity. It's a very good character of electricity actually because one electron is free to conduct electricity. These things will get more clear when you study the actual structure of an atom where you understand how the electrons behave and I feel electron plays a very critical role actually. So if you see all these metals like sodium, potassium, chlorine, they are metals or non-metals because of the electrons. Because sodium can give electrons, chlorine can take electrons, right? So it is electron which determines what kind of element it is. And the conductivity of an element, for example, gold conducts because it has extra electrons. So everything depends on electrons. It plays a critical role actually and it jumps, it jumps from here to here, here to here. It keeps doing that. And you will understand the beauty of electrons more when you study the, uh, the chapter of uh, atoms. The other uh, carbon atom, ele Allotropes is Buckminster Fuller is very recently discovered, not very old. They are in the forms of carbon electrops. And the first one to be identified is C60. There are many of them actually. There are maybe, you know, 670, C80, I don't know. But there are many of them. But the first one that was identified was 60, 70, 60. That is like a football structure. They are all carbons here, all carbons. And in this case, there are 60 carbons and they, are, they, are, they have the structure like football, right? And this is uh, named after this uh, US architect, Buckminster. And Buckminster Fullerene is a dark solid at room temperature. Yes, guys, dark solid at room temperature. And if you see, this is neither hard nor soft. In case of diamond, it was very hard. In case of graphite, it was soft. But if this is something midway, it is neither hard nor soft. It has different property actually, and that's why it is. Sorry, and there are so many. Uh, uh, I mean, versions of this Buckminster Fullerene, and there's a hell lot of research going on 
on this bug list of you. Not very old, I think 20 years or something. Not even 20, yeah. Maybe 15 or something, yeah. 15 years or something, it was formed. I don't know the exact date, you can Google and find out the exact date it was formed. Very, really recent actually. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.